Hello there, BookTube. So, I've um, I've not really been engaging much with BookTube the last couple of weeks, and that's because uh, I've had a weird experience in that I've not picked up a book in weeks. I literally, like, not read a single word in two weeks. Um, and it's just been one of these weird things where I just, I felt this this reading slump isn't quite the word for it, but almost like a media slump. Um, as uh, as you know from uh, my previous video, <coughs> kick the tripod there, as you know from my previous video, um, I was uh, I was in quite a, a depressive state after my uh, my reading of the Cormac McCarthy books, which didn't help, but it wasn't the cause, obviously. Um, I tried to you know get back in into uh, into reading and you know playing games things like that. I've really not spent much time doing any of that. Um, instead, I threw myself at something completely new, um, and I have been writing. Um, I've been writing uh, various bits of fiction, um, and I've been writing and planning my new game that I am running on Mondays, uh, which is GURPS. Um, I have uh, I have some of my GURPS books here. This is the GURPS space book. I've got a collection of them. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. And it's been fine. It's been working well for me. Um, I want to get back into reading. I want to get back into playing my video games. And I want to get back into making videos for you guys. Uh, but I do feel that sometimes I burn out on these things. And I need a change of, uh, of, of scenery. I need to do something different. So what I'm going to do is I want to spend a bit of time on this channel talking about other things, just because I think I'll get more out of that. Uh, because if I have times like this where I just don't read for a couple of weeks, I'm not going to have anything to talk about, and that's no good. So instead, I'm going to uh, start including other things on this channel. So I want to start talking about things like TV shows, films, and my role-playing games uh, more regularly. So... That's uh, that's something I want to focus on. I've actually been uh, been keeping my bullet journal, and I have a selection of shows that I want to focus on um, that I think will be interesting. I want to do like a season by season breakdown of various different shows, and I've actually I've planned out how I'm going to be rating and recording shows here, so that I can uh, keep a track of each episode as I watch them. And then, as I cross them off, I can decide how I feel about them. And I can go back and I can review notes that I've made. So this is like my first little splash page. And then further on, I'll have notes further in. Like, what I thought on each episode. That kind of thing. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting. Um, I've got a couple of different shows I want to do. Obviously, you've just seen that's my Star Trek page. Um, I want to go back and look at classic Star Trek. Um, now, I'm not going to go to the original series. It's just too aged for me. It's just... I can't get into that. But I do want to go over Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. Voyager was, was my first Trek, so it's it's my favourite. Um, I know that people consider it one of the weaker ones, but it is my favourite. Uh, I want to go over a couple of uh, of bigger like medical drama shows. Um, like I say, medical, medical crime in some cases, like Bones and House MD. Again, shows I've loved in the past. I'd also like to go over maybe Dexter as well. Um, and do like a season by season breakdown. And then there's uh, there's sci-fi space operas. Um, and um, cyberpunk or near future uh, shows. Things like, um, I've got here Altered Carbon. Uh, I've got Person of Interest, Timeless, Black Mirror, that kind of stuff. And for the, um, the more space opera stuff. I've got things like Farscape, Battlestar Galactica, The Orville, Killjoys, Firefly. You know, the, the general uh, the general kind of thing. And these are all shows that I'm either interested in or really love in the first place. Like, Firefly is one of my favourite series, so I've got a lot to say on it. Battlestar Galactica, on the other hand, is a show that I've had recommended to me endlessly, and I've never sat and watched. So, I want to get into that, because it's this massive, um, this massive hole in my sci-fi experience. Now the thing is, these are holes I can f I can plug quite quickly. Now I, I don't have a great um, back catalogue of books that I've read, but I have seen quite a lot of TV shows and films. 
That said, there's still a few little holes I'm going to plug. Uh, plugging a hole like Battlestar Galactica is going to be a lot easier than plugging a hole like, say, The Wheel of Time. <laughs> it's Even though there's way more episodes of, uh, of Battlestar Galactica than there is books in the Wheel of Time series, each book in Wheel of Time is going to take somewhere in the region of about 15 to 20 hours to read. That's assuming that you can read at a reasonable pace. Um, whereas you can get through an entire season of a TV show in that. So I'm treating one season of a TV show as if it was one book. Because it takes about the same amount of time investment. And I'm going to you know, make videos about, uh, about TV shows, films, things like that. Um, there are film series I'd like to talk about. I've got a lot to say on uh, series like um, the Star Wars films, obviously. D doesn't everyone. Uh, the MCU. Uh, and um, other series that maybe people don't talk about a lot, like the Pirates of the, Car of the Caribbean uh, series. Um, I've got a fair bit to say about that. Um, so those are things I want to cover, and I'm going to go over um, you know, my role-playing games. Both uh, GURPS and D&D &D are the ones I'm going to focus on. Um, I'll occasionally talk about others. I, I do play uh, Shadowrun and World of Darkness, but I'm moving away from those games at the moment because I find that GURPS is the game system I'm most excited to play, um, whereas D&D &D is the system that everyone knows. So those are the two that I'm going to be focusing on. But I've got plenty of, um, of stuff that I want to talk about and character builds I want to go over. And when I say character builds, I mean character builds are actually useful. D&D um, &D often talks about character builds that, um, that go all the way up to level 20. Like if you look up like how to build Captain America in D&D, &D, it'll be a 20 level breakdown of making Captain America. And he won't be complete until level 20, which is absolutely useless to you. Because you'll never play that. You will absolutely never play that. Uh, most campaigns run between levels 5 and 12. Um, I don't know any campaigns that go beyond 15, any published campaigns. And um, even, even in the what is now almost 20 years of role-playing, I have never once played a game where I reached max level. Never once. Uh, I've never run a game that went to max level. I've never played a game that goes to max level. Uh, I have reliably played characters between levels 5 and 8 a lot. And I've had higher level campaigns go as high as level 15, but never above that. So, um, yeah. Uh, if I'm going to be building you know, build plans, I will be building them at like level 5, level 10 maybe. Like, if I was building a, a street level superhero, for example, someone like... Uh, like Daredevil, I'd probably go for level 5. If I was building someone who's supposed to be much higher, a higher power level, I'd go level 10. So maybe Iron Man. And yes, you can do Iron Man in D&D. &D. Um, it's shockingly easy to do Iron Man in D&D. &D. Um, so yeah, those are, those are things that I'll, uh, that I'll be making in the future. And uh, hopefully people will find them exciting and interesting. It does mean a step away from BookTube, but let's face it. Um, I'm Persona Non Grata in Booktube. There are a few people in the Booktube community that really you know, want to listen to me and you know, have, uh, have conversations. We, we've got a nice little community. Gilded is available. Go ahead and join. There's people talking there all the time. But let's face it, um, Booktube uh, splits into three broad categories, and I'm not really uh, welcome in any of them. Um, there is the teeny bopper middle grade YA uh, crowd, uh, which is... Um, all about middle grade and YA, largely romance or contemporary. There's a little bit of fantasy, but it's not like high fantasy or gritty fantasy. It's very whimsical stuff. Um, they have an obsession with um, you know, representation. So everything is all about, depending on who you, who you talk to, if they, the ones reading middle grade, they're less bothered by that. They're just, they're, they're just big children. Um, effectively, um, but the ones reading mainly YA, they are obsessed with representation. So everything is queer, and everything has a non-white character in them as as the main character. Um, and I hate all that identity politics nonsense, so I ignore that. Um, they uh, one one thing I have noticed is a lot of them don't do it out of malice. Um, they're obsessed with the uh, the representation thing, but um, they're doing it without meaning to be uh, like identitarian. They're doing it just because everyone does it, so they just fall into that role. 
and um, it means that you end up with people who are reading books and they'll pick up a book and go, I'm, I'm really excited to read this because uh, this, this has mental health rep and its own voices and it's, it's queer and blah 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 and then they read it and realise that they don't care that the main character is a mixed race person written by a mixed race author and they don't care that they're gay and there's a gay romance and they don't care that one of the person there, one of the, one of the main characters in the story has depression because none of that is fucking interesting there's no plot, there's no real world building, there's no character development, and that's what actually makes a book interesting. So they read this thinking, well, it ticks all the boxes, I should love this. Because that's, those are the boxes they've been taught to tick. They're not doing it out of any malice, they're not doing it because they actually have a political agenda, they're doing it because that's what they've been taught to do. So they pick it up and go, it's queer, it's own voices, this should be perfect, and then they read it and it's boring as all. Fuck. Um, I've seen a few of them do this. Um... It's, it. I kind of want to say stop reading books just because they have queer characters. That that's why it's boring to you because you're reading a book that isn't a good book. It's just an excuse to have a queer character in the in the main role. Read good books, and some of them might have queer characters in them, and then then you'll be happy. Um, but yeah. You can't say that in uh, in this area of booktube. The other area of booktube is um, is worse, and that is uh, they they know who they are. That's the shelf spaces, um, the shelf spaces that they're all part of the shelf space uh, Discord channel, um, and it includes pretty much every booktuber that you focus on if you read in fantasy and sci-fi and watch any of like the big names, like the very big names, like Daniel Green. He doesn't tend to show up all that often, but he's still tangentially connected. But the the main focus is on like the the shelf space Discord and like channels have kind of filtered into that area, and now they all interconnect. They all do crossovers with each other, and um, yeah, uh, if you have the wrong politics, you're not welcome. Um, so uh, obviously, I'm not welcome because uh, I don't necessarily have the wrong politics, but I don't have their politics, so therefore I'm not welcome. Um, they, they likely think that I'm some kind of extremist, far-right weirdo, but um, I'm actually left-wing. Like, these people don't realise, like, I've had constant nice comments from, like, conservative Christians who I disagree with on a lot of issues because I was speaking in favour of conservative people having a voice and people assume that I'm now conservative. I'm really not. I'm quite left-wing. I've always been left-wing. I'm just not insane. Um, so, that's... Uh, <laughs> that that has created a, a weird situation where now most of my viewers are conservative. I mean, I'm actually a registered conservative voter here in Britain, but that's because our left-wing parties are insane. Um, if we had a proper left-wing party that pushed left-wing um, ideas that I agree with, then I'd be voting for them, but we don't. Uh, what we actually have is, um, is an incompetent conservative party and insane right-wing parties. So I, I vote for the one that is uh, is less likely to cause damage. Um, <laughs> it's not an easy situation. Basically, the British parties are terrible. Oh God! And oh my! Oh oh my! I'm gonna die. Um, that that's that's the British political system at the moment. Uh, there are no good options away from politics. Like the shelf spaces, like I say, it's all it's all political grandstanding, and it's all like scratch scratch my back, I stick a knife in yours. So I'm not welcome there. Um, the other side of BookTube is the Steve Donahue side, and I kind of like this side. Um, Steve Donahue is one of my favorite booktubers. I, I love watching Steve Donahue. Um, uh, his his videos are endlessly entertaining for what is literally a guy monologuing at a camera, much like I am now, uh, without a script. Um, talking about the weather, his dog, and opening his mail on camera. That should be the most boring thing you've ever seen, and yet it's endlessly fascinating. Like, I don't know how he pulls it off, he's just got this natural charisma. He's just somehow managed to make being the most boring trite guy on the internet into something genuinely, f genuinely fascinating and interesting. Like, then you what you keep watching, and slowly over time you realise that Steve Donahue is certifiably insane. 
like I don't even mean slightly. I mean, I mean like institutional levels of insane. Like he is, he is so fun to watch. But my God, watch him for a few hours. Like pick a couple of his Q and A videos or his really long, like anything that's over forty five minutes, he'll get a good feel for it. There will be a rant in there, like in the middle. He'll be talking about books. He'll be talking about mail. He'll just be casually having a conversation. Then there'll be like a five minute stint where he will go off and just start ranting about something insane and he, there'll be like a, an opinion in there that you'll go what what did you really just say that or a claim that is so clearly a complete lie like so obviously and completely complete uh, total bullshit um it's amazing to watch him go it's like whether it's whether it's his his political rants which are a thing to behold uh, I'm not going to try to replicate them. Like, there are things to behold. You really need to see them firsthand. Um, or his uh, his like goes at like the dude bro culture thing. Like some of them, by the way, I, I agree with. Like some of the things he says, I agree with. But other things, I he says, I I just I can't envision. Like his his whole like I can psychically talk to dogs thing. And yes, he. This is this is constant through line through his videos is that he believes he can like psychically communicate with dogs and like influence them. Like if if you have your dog and you walk past him and your dog's on a lead, um, he genuinely believes that your dog will listen to him before they'll listen to you because he has this connection with the dog. It, it's slightly painful to watch, and then of course, then of course that went a step further in more recent videos where uh, that he's basically admitted that he grew up with dogs, that he socialised with dogs as a kid. Basically, he he's trying to get across this idea that he was practically raised as a pack animal, um, which he clearly wasn't. That, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> this, this is... <laughs> if I need to explain why this is so clearly a lie, um, I don't know what else to say. Um... But then there's then there's stories of him apparently like going away from society for days on end and just sleeping rough with a pack of dogs. Not not a pack of dogs he owns, just like going out to like dogs accumulate around him. And then he goes off into the woods and sleeps rough like a wild man. And the dogs all psychically protect him and treat him like a member of the pack and they like, fight off a bear for him. I'm not joking, he said this. <laughs> I'm not, I wish I wish I kept notes so that I could say which videos to go back and reference. But yeah, he, he said he said like he went into the woods and like lived as a wild man where he didn't speak for days and he just socialized with dogs and he slept by a lean to wild in the woods and like dogs like fought off a bear to keep him safe and like he said all of this. Like he is he is Woohoo! Yeah. Um, Steve Donahue's brilliant. <laughs> Watch his channel. Seriously, it's growing for a reason. Like he keeps getting more subscribers, and I swear it's it's the car crash effect. People are just watching and go, like, "When's he gonna say the next stupid thing?" Like um, then then he'll have like really intelligent debates and discussions. Like recently, he's been talking about. Um, about the nature of objectivity in reading, which is a subject I completely agree with him on. Um, obviously, there is objective quality in, in writing and reading. Like When you read a book, it is very obvious that a well-written novel is better than the scrawlings of a six-year-old child. They're not subjective. One is better than the other. And as soon as you admit that one is better than the other, then you've admitted there is a scale by which we can judge them, and therefore all books can be placed on this scale. It is such a simple through line of logic that he is so clearly correct on. Um, and yet, people have argued with him. Like the, the reading is subjective, tastes a subjective crowd, have argued with him endlessly. Um, I don't know why, he's so obviously right. Um, but it's, at the same time, he'll say, ridiculous things like one of his most recent Q&A videos uh, he said um, he said that there were a few things he would do if he got into power uh, in the United States uh, the first thing he would do um, is that he would hand the power to someone else who's actually competent and would know what to do which is a really good answer uh, but 
assuming that's not the option, he would do a various, you know, a, a few various different things. And his third thing is that he would um, he would decommission fourteen um, missile systems uh, that are uh, currently uh, currently still being uh, still being maintained by the the U.S. military that are apparently outdated. Um, these missile systems cost three hundred and seventy million dollars to operate and uh, he believes that if he takes these 370 million dollars worth of missiles and decommissions them um because there's 370 million dollars there he could give every single american one million dollars because there's only 370 americans in the world aren't there steve donahue Believes himself to be this analytical mind who can, you know, deeply, deeply assess books and uh, tell you how how prose uh, are formulated. He can he can go into the nitty gritty and he can you know, really, really dig deep and explain how uh, pacing and character development works. But he can't do simple maths because he doesn't know the difference between three hundred and seventy million and three hundred and seventy trillion. $370 trillion would divide equally amongst the American population to about a million dollars each. Because orders of magnitude matter. $370 million divided by the population of America, which is approximately 370 million people, is one dollar each. So he, this, this explains his entire political uh, pers persuasion. Um, this explains his whole... like. His whole anger issues at the likes of the Republican parties when they, they fund these things. Because he genuinely thinks that the Republican Party is stopping the entire American population from all being millionaires. So that they can fund um, these outdated military uh, systems. And he's angry at them for doing this. Because he doesn't realise that if you have a million of this and a million of that and you divide them. That millions cancel out. $370 trillion would be more money than exists in the world. To put that into context, like, there's million, then there's billion, then there's trillion. Like, no. Just no. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, the fact that this is something that he feels so strongly about means that this isn't just a mistake where he's looked at it, he's not realised, and he's made this stupid mistake where he's looked at this money and he's gone, $370 million, that, that would be a million each. And not realised, of course, that the, the the unit cancels out. People will do that. That's actually a very common mistake in mathematics. Uh, where people look at numbers and they immediately you know, screw that up. Especially if they're shown the answer first. To go, we could have a million dollars each for every person. If we cancel this thing, which costs $370 million. And that, that sounds right in some people's heads. Um, it does, it does. Um, and it's just because we struggle to imagine large numbers. Um, humans have always had that problem. But it only takes a second of thought to realise that's clearly nonsense. Obviously. Right, for a start, why on earth would 14 missile systems, outdated or not, cost enough money to give every single person a million dollars? Why would they ever cost that much? What, how could you ever justify them costing that much? Um, so, yeah, as soon as you ans ask that question, you realise the answer cannot possibly be that that's correct. That, that aside, that explains his, his anger at, po at political systems, because he believes such outrageous things as that, that he can then blame his misconceptions on political parties that haven't done anything wrong, because he's fucked up, not them. Um, and then he has this righteous indignation about them, uh, which is admittedly a, a quite offensive at times. The way he talks about people, um, he talks he talks down about a lot of people when he's so clearly nuts. Um, but at the same time, he's uh, he's fun to watch. So yeah, but like like the, the issue that I've got there, like I say, I'm not really welcome in that section of booktube either. And it's not because I think Steve Donahue is a nut job. Um, he is. He is. 
um, that's not the reason because I've not really vocalized that. Um, I've had, com well, I say conversation. I've had like a back and forth in the comments section with with Steve, and he's a he's a thoroughly nice guy. Um, he's a nut job, but he's a thoroughly nice guy. Most most people are at least slightly nutty. Um, Steve is very nutty. <laughs> most people are slightly nutty. Most people believe something absolutely ridiculous and completely moronic, including me. I don't know what that is, because if I did, I wouldn't believe it. But everyone believes something insane, because we all make mistakes. Um, Steve just makes a lot more than most, um, and publicizes them, so uh, that's, that's something. Um, the problem is that the books he reads are books I'm not really interested in. Like, he's very much focused on non-fiction. I, I want to focus on fiction. Um, he likes to read biographies. Um, he's uh, when he does read fiction, it's usually very, very old classics. It's um, he'll talk about things like like classical era, the you know Odyssey, the Iliad, that kind of stuff. Jane Austen, um, Middlemarch. He, he talks about Middlemarch a fair bit because that's one of his favorite books, um, and that's all fine. Like if that's what you like, that's what you like. Um, I'm not really interested in that. Like, I, I want to understand classics, but I'm way more interested in modern day sci-fi and fantasy. So, um, yeah, it's it's a section of BookTube that doesn't really work for me because I'm not interested in the discussion topics. Uh, there are a few channels that I am subscribed to that kind of filter into Steve, um, like smaller channels that are in his orbit, if that makes sense, uh, where they talk about similar books that he... Uh, than, uh, he, they talk about similar books as him. Uh, they often do the same tag videos as him, and they they you know communicate with him. They they um, they send messages backwards and forwards. They're in touch with each other, and um, it's a pleasant part of BookTube. It genuinely is. Like for all the criticisms I give for Steve John Donahue, and I I say this genuinely. Like I believe that he is completely and totally off his rocker. He is insane. Right, the man does not know what the hell is going on in the world. But he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I, I like him. I like him. If if I had to pick someone from BookTube to be around, right, and I had to choose from like the people who seem to be like the figureheads of the sections of BookTube, Steve Donahue wins hands down. He's a thoroughly nice guy. Like he believes weird, batshit, insane things, but he's not a nasty person. He's not malicious. He's He's helpful and reasonable and kind, and yeah, I disagree with him on a lot of political issues, but I have no issue with the man as a person. Like, thoroughly like him. I understand why people want to watch him. I understand why people, you know, communicate with him and spend time uh, sending messages backwards and forwards, because he is a likeable person um, who cares about people. Like, he will offer to help you as best he can. He will send books to people. He will give recommendations. He will try to uh, to facilitate bringing people into the hobby. And that can only come from a person who genuinely wants to be nice to someone, who wants to bring people in. So for all the criticisms I give for Steve Donahue, he is a thoroughly, thoroughly nice guy. Um, I, can't, I can't really say bad things about him. Um, I'm saying bad things about his beliefs. And I think there's a very, very key difference. Uh, being wrong does not make you a bad person. It makes you a wrong person. Um, and Steve Donahue was regularly wrong, and I'm sure I am as well, because we all are. Um, so, yeah. But like I say, I don't really fit in with the, the three different sections of BookTube um, for various different reasons. Um, some of them are thoroughly unpleasant, horrible places to be. Uh, some of them make no real sense uh, to me, like that the teeny bopper side, like... I'm not interested in reading that, and I find it bizarre that they're, they're reading mainly children's books. Like, it's all YA and middle grade, and yet they're all, like, not all. There's the occasional man, but it's mainly women in their late 20s and early 30s, which is freaky as all hell. Like, that that creeps me out a little bit, if I'm honest. Like, yeah, re you can read a middle grade or a young adult book if you want on occasion. Like, I, I occasionally do myself. But if you're going to be reading books, you should at least be reading some adult literature. Like, that's what's aimed at your age group. If you're reading consistently for a different age group, I question your mental uh, your mental development. Like, it just seems wrong. Um, and I say that thoroughly aware 
that there is a group that I belong to which gets a lot out of reading YA and even middle grade, and that's people with ADHD and autism. Um, I have ADHD, and um, it has been shown that ADHD brains uh, struggle to find the entertainment in a lot of adult literature. They find it too dry and too boring, whereas a lot of the middle grade and YA literature, they find it a whimsical escape, and um, it's all about executive function. Uh, because we lack a lot of the executive function that a lot of people have, uh, it's a nice escape and a nice uh, a, a nice chance to regress a little, um, so that you can you can feel a, a little more you know safe and secure and you know uh, away from all of the stresses of the world, and it allows you to reset, as it were. Um, that's a perfectly reasonable reason to do that. And you know what? If any of them said that they did that for that reason, I would immediately be behind them. But they don't. Um, I don't know why any of them do it, and I, like I say, it's that's that's my hang-ups. I watch those channels and I find them bizarre. But yeah, it's a, I've gone on a, a tangent. So I I feel disconnected from a lot of booktube, and uh, that's reasonable. It's understandable given what's happened. But I want to expand out, and uh, I'm going to be doing that in future videos. So. Um, my, my next few videos I'm going to be posting, I'm going to record a few of them and uh, put up um, a few videos uh, in the next uh, next few days. Uh, I know I've not been uploading as much the last couple of months, but I've got a few different videos from a few different topics and I think they'll be interesting. Uh, so stick around and see what you think. I've also got, um, I'm also going to be doing a couple of booktube videos that even though I've not been reading the last few weeks, I do have a few book related videos coming out and that is I'm going to be redoing my booktube newbie tag because I think that will be fascinating um, I'm going to basically do a, a newbie tag redux um, where I go back over the tag and see how I feel about it two years later and saying that I'm also going to be doing a two year booktube anniversary video where I go back over what it's been like on booktube for the last two years, and I believe there is an anniversary tag, and I'm going to answer the questions in the, that anniversary tag as well during that video, because it has now been almost two years since I started BookTube. It doesn't feel like it. It feels like I started last week, um, but yeah, it's been two years, because I started during lockdowns, and uh, I've got a fair bit to talk about there, so I think that'll be fascinating. So I look forward to seeing what uh, uh, what people think of that, and we'll, uh, we'll move forward uh, from there, we'll make this into a nice variety channel. We'll talk about, still be talking about books, so don't worry if you like books. The books are still there, but we'll be talking about loads of other things as well. And um, if you're interested in chatting, do join the the, uh, the the server. We've got a Gilded server. It's like Discord, but it's a different app. Um, the reason that we picked Gilded over Discord is one, it's free. Discord's not free. Discord, you need to buy Nitro to unlock some of the features. And you need multiple people to boost your, your server. Uh, so you need like f at least five or six people buying Nitro on your server in order to boost it. So it gets quite expensive. Um, on top of that, like the um, the Mi6 uh, bots that you pay for, uh, on uh, that, you, that you include on Discord that everyone has on their servers, they're not free either. You have to pay for those bots. So um, yeah, it was costing me quite a bit of money to run the, uh, the Discord server. Um, and it wasn't just costing me. There were a few people boosting the channel, uh, the the server as well, like boosting everything up. So uh, I told everyone to stop paying for the server, and uh, we moved to Gilded. Uh, and Gilded, like I say, it's it's free. You can support Gilded, uh, but most of that money comes comes to me, which is nice. It works like Patreon, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, you send that in. Uh, like Gilded takes a small cut off the top, very small, and most of the money comes to me. So it's like crowdfunding. Only it's crowdfunding through a social network system and a chat app. Um, Gilded has some nice little uh, abilities that uh, Discord doesn't. It's got e extra groups that work almost like independent servers that you can be a part of or not, depending on what you want, uh, which allowed us to expand quite a lot. We've got loads of different channels in there. Some of them are still empty because we're still quite small, uh, but some of them are very active, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I, I really like the community. It's still a small community, but we've got a very close-knit group, and uh, I really like the people there. They're, they're lovely people. 
Um, and frankly, if this channel never grows, if I still get like 100 views per video and the only people really watching are the few, you know, hang-ons that, um, that are, are for some reason entertained by my face um, and the people in that, that gilded uh, server, the few people who have subscribed, if they're the only people who are watching, I'm happy with that. Like, I don't, I'm not here to be rich and famous. I wouldn't know what to do if, do myself if that happened. Um, and I'd rather have nice people I get on well with. Like, two dozen people who you can be really friendly with and actually develop a relationship with, way more valuable than, you know, 2,000 people who you don't know. Um, having both is even better, but yeah, if I had to pick one or the other, the small knit community is what I'd go for every time. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's gilded for you. Uh, it also has a different uh, system for um, its its terms of service. Uh, Discord recently updated theirs to include like hate speech issues, which meant that people would be very limited on what they could say. Uh, and I was not having any of that. We have a political channel in there, and if people want to have political debates, we can, and we will, and we do. Um, and even, you can disagree with me on almost anything, by the way, you're still welcome. Um, like, we don't, we don't allow outright just bigoted nonsense. Like, if you're going to come in and, you know, spout, like, KKK white supremacy, you're going to get booted. Um, that's not allowed. But you can come in and disagree with me politically and disagree with me ideologically on certain things. Like, if you want to go in... Like, we've we've had things like a debate on abortion, which is a topic that will get you banned on almost any other server. No, we've got a separate room for it. If you don't want to take part, you mute that room and you don't look in it. But if you do, you can actually debate it. We can have a proper, intelligent conversation. It's lovely. But the main purpose is we've got... You know, book section, video game section, we've got a, a growing war games and role playing section where you can discuss all these different things uh, and it's it's a nice experience. So yeah, come and join us if you want to chat and uh, I'll see you in future videos. And uh, yeah, my videos will get a bit more regular now. I'm, I'm more settled, I'm more secure in my uh, my time and uh, my my personal self, if that makes sense. Uh, I've made a lot of a lot of progress in my um, my mental health, which has been an, an issue for me, and my physical health, which has created a lot of fatigue. So I've made a lot of progress there, and I think I can now safely say that I can reliably start making videos multiple times a week, like I used to. So I'll see you in the next few videos. Bye.